So welcome everyone uh, to the day two of uh, inaugural Stanley ML Asia Technical Forum. Uh, I'm Sakya Dasgupta, CEO and founder of Edge Cortex, and I'll be chairing today's session. Uh, it's a great pleasure to talking to all of you from Tokyo here. Uh, so the final poster presentation is from Anthony I. Joseph. Uh, he's the chief technology officer of My House Geek. And he's going to talk about applying machine learning capabilities to wearable IoT devices for boxing technique management. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Anthony Joseph, and I'd like to talk to you about what I'd like to think is an interesting application of machine learning running on wearable IoT devices for maintaining a boxer's technique. So just to set the scene, what actually am I doing to me to do this? My doctor tell me to exercise, and exercise is hard. My trainers tell me to keep managing my technique, and that's even harder. So I was asking a question to myself, can we use wearable tech and of course machine learning to give feedback to athletes? Because let's face it, during the COVID-19 lockdowns, playing a video game where I had to do a squat, it's pretty much the only real exercise I did. So to formalize this objective, um, I asked myself the question, what's the minimum set of devices required to detect a boxer successfully blocking with one hand and punching with the other hand. So what would a possible solution look like? So we've got two small devices on each box's hand and a third central device to, uh, to collect information on. So the right hand is punching across, send this to the central device. The left hand is blocking, send that to the central device. The central device says, well, one hand is guarding while the other hand is punching, we've got a good technique. So we've successfully guarded, and we'll send that back to the second device. So let's go into a little bit more detail about the hardware. So in the wraps embedded here would be the Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense. Works from a form factor, fits very well, runs TensorFlow Lite, and the accelerometer on board is perfect for this purpose. I use a Seed Studio WIA terminal for a lot of its peripherals and its onboard display. Two different devices, both run TensorFlow Lite, and both serve different purposes. So in order to do this, I would put in the sensor there and secure it to my boxing wraps, these uh, cloth wraps, uh, two, uh, two together with uh, paper wrap tape and plastic body pins. So what will the software look like? So the Nano 33 BLE Sense has an onboard motion sensor and that would send uh, motion data to TensorFlow Lite. It would then communicate high-level insights like what kind of punch over Bluetooth low energy to the Wii terminal, and it would then send back other uh, insights back to the device. And we'll provide haptic and visual feedback through some other sensors and other displays. So now let's talk a little bit about the model. So I use TensorFlow Lite and Edge Impulse to do this continuous motion analysis. We use spectral analysis with the neural network classifier to start to classify the motion data we were getting and k-means anomaly detection to find any behavior we couldn't really classify. And when we ran this through the model, it was surprisingly very well effective. We were able to detect the different types of boxing punches with pretty high level of accuracy. The issue came with guarding. Guarding is a static movement. It's just remaining here. And we can't tell the difference between and someone actively blocking or someone who's just got their arm out to the side. So we needed to think a little bit outside the box. So we used a neural network to detect whether or not we had a block. If we had a block, we need, we went, I went and used a separate model, a k-nearest neighbor algorithm to detect the difference between a good block and a bad block. So we had two separate models, two trained differently, and this worked surprisingly well. So as a conclusion, just to wrap things up, what did we learn? The system architecture actually worked relatively well. Combine the two models as well, was, was also successful in the sense that we were able to achieve our objective. And one thing I learned from uh, Pete Warden's talk uh, a few months ago was that you can treat the results of a TensorFlow model as yet another onboard sensor that is streaming you information. Um, so where would I kind of like to go with this information? I'd like to start assess the models that are built with different users so we can try to filter out some of the systemic biases that we might have. For instance, some boxing trainers like to jump with a punch, like the Manny Pacquiao style of boxing. Like to detect some more complex movement, like a weave, like the photo shows, and combat as well, like a jab cross jab. Also, like to give some more feedback as well, like what's a good punch and what's a bad punch. Obviously, incorporating feedback from a trained boxing coach. 
and what well, I think is the holy grail of uh, wearable IoT machine learning is can we retrain models that are currently running on the device? And I've got some few theories about how we can do that. Um, outside the usual Terry Crews uh, video, um, what I'd like to see is how can we use different sensors beyond accelerometers, like these bioelectric sensors. Can we start to build up our capabilities using different types of sensors? And can we apply different models to different sports or sectors? Huge thank you to everyone for coming and listening to my talk. Huge thank you to the TinyML community, uh, and particularly my friends and family and the Transfer Version Active who taught me everything I know about boxing. Thank you very much. We take some questions now. Uh, okay, so let me ask a question. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit more or talk a little bit about your data collection process? Uh, and if you have some figures in terms of the accuracy of the final model that you got, that made you combine the neural network with the key nearest ne uh, neighbors approach. That's a really good question. Um, so when I started out doing my data collection, it was pretty much me not wanting to go to the gym and I just stood in front of my computer just punching <laughs> to try to collect uh, as much samples as I could uh, to kind of build up my, uh, my model and to train it. Um, when it came to uh, actually running it, I actually sat down with a trainer and like another boxer and kind of said like, you know, this is what I'm doing. How does it look like? To try to at least get like an expert's perspective. So that's where I kind of came with that thing of like, well, I can detect what looks like a good punch, but can I detect what looks like a bad punch? That feedback loop wasn't quite captured in that, um, that whole thing. But at least for now, it was just a really fun basic start just to kind of test the water. Like, can we actually do this in, in tiny ML, particularly with like the wide variety of sensors, like some people have suggested, you know, should we use video? Should we use some other kind of detection? So for right now, it just ended up being like a proof of concept really. And yeah, I kind of want to see other ways to kind of like validate that we're actually getting um, some, some more good results, particularly with different boxes. Like one of my trainers, she has an incredible um, hand speed. So she can punch really, really fast. And I imagine my models would probably fail with her. So, how we can design this to kind of incorporate a wider variety of boxing styles is a good follow-up study that I want to look into. Excellent. Uh, thanks a lot, Anthony, uh, uh, for the presentation. Uh, what think... <laughs> okay, uh, so thanks once again to all the three uh, video poster presenters. Um, and we can now move on to the next section. Actually, there is one question about how Anthony, if we haven't lost him, how, how do you, can you talk more about how a guard is classified as bad for just a minute? Sure thing. So ideally, so when you're guarding, you'd want to have your, your hand close to your face to prevent your attacker from being able to punch across the side or something like that. So you'd want your hand to be absorbing it. What happens a lot when boxes particularly start out is that they'll do what they, what, um, some trainers call chicken winging, where you might go for a punch, but you kind of pull your arm up like that. And that is not a good guard. So you kind of expose your flank. Uh, if you can see in the video here, you've kind of exposed your flank to a counter punch. So that's why particularly boxers want, like trainers want to give their trainees, like the boxers to learn the fundamentals right from the get-go because to try to stop people getting into those bad habits uh, early on, because it does happen quite a lot. Thank you. I think um, it's a shame you, I, I don't have the, the picture here because I did have on my slide deck a picture of a, of a poor boxer who didn't have his guard up and you can see he took quite a bit of a punch actually. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. Back to you, Sakia. Thanks, Ira. Uh, thanks, Anthony, and thanks all the speakers once again. I would like to thank our sponsors once again, without whom uh, the Tiny ML Asia Forum would not be possible and uh, be available for free of charge. Uh, starting with ARM, our premier sponsor, the Software and Hardware Foundation for TinyML. Edge Cortex, their dynamic neural accelerator brings near cloud performance to the edge devices. Finally, SynSense. Sensense builds ultra low power sensing and inference hardware for embedded mobile and edge devices.
Thanks a lot once again to all our sponsors. I would also like to thank our partners, uh, conference partner SHAI, as well as all our media partners. So that brings us to the end of today's session. Uh, and I look forward to seeing all of you once again tomorrow for the day three of TinyML Asia. Thank you, everyone. Thanks all our speakers and all our sponsors once again. Thank you.